The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. Playing on a frozen floor. Boys and Warriors of Winter. A game of speed. A game of style. Jackets win! Jackets win! Winning soothes the pain. Losing heightens the passion. The mission is straightforward. Season is straight ahead. It is hardcore heart and soul. It's Blue Jackets hockey. And it's back. is brought to you by Game On Columbus. The atmosphere in a word, electric. Nationwide Arena is jumping tonight as the Blue Jackets open up the 2011-2012 season by hosting the Predators of Nashville. Hi everyone and welcome down to the ice inside Nationwide Arena. I'm your host, John Michael, and it's great to have you with us here this evening as in just moments. On the ice right behind me, the Jackets will open up one of the most anticipated seasons in franchise history. During the offseason, the Jackets got a facelift, and while most of the attention has been focused on the veteran acquisition, the Jackets have four rookies that made this team out of camp as well. Let's take a look. Three of those players will play tonight and make their NHL debuts. Brian Johansson, you know about him, the fourth overall pick in 2010. He will center the fourth line tonight. David Savard, he's the only defenseman in the bunch. He should see some power play time here this evening. Now, Max Mayorov, he had three stints up with the Jackets over the last three seasons. He is the odd man out. Cam Atkinson, however, really the darling of training camp. He'll be on the second line this evening. In all, a whopping 11 players on the roster tonight that were not on the roster just a year ago on opening night. And for more on the Jackets, the new look Jackets, let's go upstairs to Jeff Rimmer and Bill Davids. Gentlemen. Well, thank you, John. Good evening, everybody. And yes, it is opening night for the Columbus Blue Jackets. A buzz in the city over the summer. As John just pointed out, 11 new faces. Nine will be in the lineup tonight if you include Curtis Sanford. And of course, the three rookies that will make their National Hockey League debut. But none bigger than the acquisition, without question, of Jeff Carter and the trade made at the entry draft. And how about this? Carter and Nash, two of the premier goal scorers in all the National Hockey League, Bill. And Jeff, again, that was the talk throughout the National Hockey League, North America and around the world. But again, the question mark, will the chemistry prevail or will they find spots on separate lines? It's the centerman that Nash has been looking for. Yeah, they possess the ability to score goals, but can they work with each other? That'll be the question tonight. Well, as I mentioned, it is opening night and the opening ceremonies here at Nationwide Arena. Fans were in their seats early and were just moments away from the introduction of the 2011-2012 Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's join Greg Murray. Greg. coach is Kevin Collins. The video assistant coach, Dan Singleton. Assistant coach, Brad Berry. 
the goaltending coach, Ian Clark. Assistant coach, Dan Hynos. Assistant coach, Todd Richards. And the head coach of your Columbus Blue Jackets, Scott Arneal. And now your team at goaltender, number one, Steve Mason. On defense, number two, Reddick Martinez. On defense, number three, Mark Mephaz. On defense, number five, Aaron Johnson. At center, number seven, Jeff Carter. At left wing, number eight, Maxim Mayorov. On defense, number 10, Chris Russell. At left wing, Number 11, Matt Calvert. At right wing, number 13, Cam Atkinson. On defense, number 14, Grant Blitzum. At right wing, number 15, Derek Dorset. At center, number 16, Derek Brassard. At left wing, number 18, RJ Umberger. Center, number 19, Ryan Johansson. At left wing, number 20, Christian Husalius. On defense, number 21, James Wisniewski. At left wing, number 22, Vinny Frostball. At center, number 24, Derek McKenzie. At center, number 26, Samuel Paulson. At goaltender, number 30, Curtis Sanford. At goaltender, number 31, Mark Dekadich. At right wing, number 40, Jared Ball. At center, number 50, Antoine Vermette. On defense, number 51, Better Tootin. On defense, number 58, David Savard. And at left wing, your captain, number 61, Rick. saluting the fans here and uh, rightfully so Nash and RJ Umberger certainly getting Bill through the loudest ovations 
and uh, justly so. And justly so. Why? Well, how about Umberger signing the new deal in the summertime, Jeff? He's going to be in this city for a long time. Rick Nash, of course, committed a few years ago. And it looks like things are solidified with the leadership group. Should be a lot of fun. Ah, uh, this is terrific. Look at the players. They salute the crowd here at Nationwide. They'll do a lap around the ring. And we're just moments away from the kickoff of the 2011-2012 National Hockey League season. The Blue Jackets playing host to their rivals to the South, the Nashville Predators. First time ever, these two Central Division rivals will meet Phil in an opener. Well, I'll tell you what, you wouldn't want any other team in this building to have a crowd like this, knowing the rivalry, to have a rivalry, you gotta have a game, and that's where the Jackets feel they are right now. They're ready to come in and get things rolling on their own home ice. Columbus, 5-2-1 and one in the preseason, but how about the Predators and their preseason record? They went seven of eight, winning seven of eight games, and they feel that this season, they've got to pick up where they left off their first ever playoff series victory last spring. They got sidelined in the second round. There's young Tim Atkinson, who will make his NHL debut. Mom and Dad flew in this afternoon, and they're here to uh, certainly cheer on the highest scoring college player over the last two years, Cam Atkinson, impressive during the preseason to make the hockey club, and of course, the 61 goals, see him clinch a spot on the hockey club. Back downstairs to Greg Murray. To all the administrative and support staff, there to show our appreciation to all of our PSL holders. Many autographs were given out and several prizes were awarded, and one lucky fan was given the opportunity to drop tonight's ceremonial puck. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the winner, Alex Ramsey, and his father, season ticket holder, Todd Ramsey. Well, this youngster tossing the puck in the opening face-off is none other than Alex Ramsey. He was the lucky raffle winner at the PSL Zoo event, escorted by his dad, Todd Ramsey, who is a season ticket holder, and he drops the ceremonial first puck, the face-off between Shea Weber, captain of the Nashville Predators, and of course, Rick Thank you, Nash. Gentlemen. Thank well, you, tremendous Stop. excitement in the building here. This place is rocking, and the Jackets getting set for face-off 2010-2011. We'll take this short break. When we come back, the season will be underway. Jackets Hockey on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by Nationwide. Nationwide Insurance, the official insurance provider of the Columbus Blue Jackets. By your Central Ohio Toyota dealers. See your Central Ohio Toyota dealers. Proud sponsor of Blue Jackets Hockey. By Huntington. Visit BlueJacketsBanking.com. And by IGS Energy. Take control of your natural gas costs. Enroll at IGSEnergy.com. It's a hockey night in Central Ohio as the Jackets set to begin their 11th season in the National Hockey League. Columbus and Nashville, first of six regular season meetings. The Jackets 6-1-2 and two in the last nine here against Nashville. Steve Mason will get the start. He was a perfect 4-0 in the preseason with a 1.98 goals against average and a 9.34 save percentage. And at the opposite end, he was an all-star last season. Pekka Rene. We wondered if he would play tonight, suffering from the flu. He made the trip from Nashville last night and said he was ready to go. Our officials tonight, Steve Wacom and Stefan Oje, Derek Nansen, Tony Saracolo, the linesman. The Jackets wearing their dark blue home jerseys and the new look Predators jersey. I don't like the Predators, but I like those jerseys. Well, you're exactly right. A little change of a uh, little change of pace for the National Predators, and certainly uh, they are ready for this game tonight as well. Tonight's telecast presented in high definition by Time Warner Cable. Vermette and Smalling set for the faceoff, and the Jackets win the opening draw. Vermette amongst the league leaders, and the fans cheer the opening faceoff. We are underway with faceoff 2011. Here's Fetter Tutin, who led the Jackets in preseason scoring. Martina pushes it off, and it's Cam Atkinson who hears from the crowd as he touches the puck, and he starts the hockey game. 
making his National Hockey League de debut on the very first shift. Mason unable to trap it, sprawling along the wall. Throws it cross ice, R.J. Umberger waits for it. Umberger incidentally has scored in each of the last two openers for the Jackets. Will he do it again here tonight? Vermette on the wing. Antoine Vermette throws it in front. Rene down in the goal crease, and he'll hold on. Let's check out tonight's Toyota Keys. Bill. Well, the team right now has their own motto, and it's on the back of their jerseys inside the locker room. It says, earn it. It starts tonight. Leave nothing on the pond. Excellence is not an act. It's a habit. They've got to create that good habit of winning by hard work. And then patience versus patience. The excitement of the opening night is versus a foe that will sit back. They're going to wait, and they will capitalize on mistakes if they're made through that neutral zone. Jeff Carter, who has been outstanding over the years as a flyer in the faceoff circle, and he wins the draw here. Hands to Nash, the backhander sent wide, and will be quickly covered up by Rene. Well, I talked to Scott O'Neill this morning. He said everybody's jacked up about the big game, the busy summer. The players are excited. Big trade for Carter, who we just mentioned. Free agent signings. Everybody's pumped up. And he said, Bill, I just hope I can open up the doors and let the dogs run tonight. Yeah, you'd love to be able to do that as a head coach. That's all you want to be able to do. You've got them tuned and ready to go. Up along the wall, sent back to Grant Clitson. In front, tipped by Nash. It's off the netting, and yet another faceoff. You go to a guy like Carter that they pick up in the summer months, and as we talked in that pregame show as well as in this opening tonight, to have this guy in the middle of the ice with he and Rick Nash, both guys, they love to score goals, but they also respect each other. You're going to find them hovering around the net, and it starts with that faceoff, Jeff, and you mentioned it. This guy has been good in the box. How about 19th last year in faceoff wins? Jackets as a team, for the record, finished eighth in faceoff win percentage. Shea Weber, the outlet pass to the captain, David Leglon. It sails the length of the ice. Clipson will touch up, and that's icing. Well, you get a chance now to take a look at the head coach. Out that uh, Nashville Predators, Barry Trotz, 13 years behind the, ten the bench, the second longest tenured coach behind the Buffalo Sabre coach, Lindy Ruff. Jack Adams, finalist the last two years as coach of the year, and one of the best guys in the biz. Face off, Renee's right. Jackets win another draw. Throw to the point. Chris Russell lets one go. That's off the mark. David Savard waits patiently. His family flying in and driving in from Quebec City. His brothers drove in. His parents flew in. And they're here as he makes his National Hockey League debut. R.J. Umberger on to Cam Atkinson. The wrist shot gloved. And the Jackets have started with a flurry. Well, earlier face-off win, well, you get an example to see what happens when you win the draw. That puck coming back to the point. The one thing that the defense of the Jackets, they're going to do a better job this year, that is get the pucks through. But it starts right away in the face-off department. And you mentioned it, Jeff, the Jackets have had success the last four years. Well, there you see they're perfect tonight, 5-0. and oh. Ryan Johansson, he too, the third of three National Hockey League rookies and makes his NHL debut here at Nationwide tonight. And there, the shot from a distance, loved by Rene, and he will again hold on. Bill, how difficult is it? Here's a man that, uh, young man that's obviously an outstanding goaltender, but uh, suffering from the flu, but did get the go-ahead from team doctors and trainers here to play in tonight's hockey game. Well, in talking with Barry Trotz this morning, he said there was no question this guy was going to play. They were very cautious. They made sure that he was uh, hydrated and ready to go. And you know Pecorini. He's one guy that certainly shows up each and every night. Well, from the left wing board, steered wide of the net by Mason. Shot from the point, gloved off Mason's glove, backhanded there by Halaschuk, but sent wide of the net. And sent in front, gloved by Mason, and he will hold on. One of the things that you're going to see, a little different from Steve Mason this year, and we had a chance to watch him in the preseason, his positioning in and around the blue of the crease. Notice that he is within that crease area. Last year, Jeff, at this time, he was out. He was challenging, and when you do that, you make yourself open. And right now, Ian Clark, the coach, has spent a lot of time with him. Certainly looks poised and controlled. Smithson, Jeffrey on, and Hornquist. Up front for this Nashville Predator Hockey Club. Calvert racing down that left wing. Calvert had it swept away from him and dumped back into Columbus territory as we approach the three-minute mark of this opening period. 
Jackets heading immediately to Minnesota. The Wild will open up their season tomorrow night hosting these Jackets. And then Columbus come home and will face the Vancouver Canucks. And last night opened their campaign at home in a loss to the Penguins without Sidney Crosby. Eric Dorsett, Blum, sent for Paulson, blocked. And this is Kostitsin at center. Long shot, sails wider than that. Mark Pinnock and Grant Klitson currently patrolling the blue line. Shot by Suter, saved Mason, and he will hold on. As Kostitsin was right there on the doorstep awaiting a possible rebound, and that's important for Mason, and we saw it in the preseason, Bill, controlling those rebounds. And in the meantime, hey, Nationwide Insurance, the official insurance provider of the Columbus Blue Jackets, to get a quote, fans, call 877 on your side or find a local agent at nationwide.com. Martinez tying up Kostitsin, who fights through, deals it far side from the point Weber. Tees one up, shot blocked by Prospel, goes right up into the equipment of Mason, who will again will hold on. Boy, I'll tell you, you want to block, you want to block a shot from Shea Weber, you may want to get a little closer. But watch the feed from the corner out high, and you give this guy enough time. He's got one of the harder shots in the National Hockey League, time and space, but look at Prospel, playing goaltender at the top of the circles. Weber is being touted as a potential Norris Trophy winner. Of course, Weber, last season, was a runner-up to Nicholas Lipskin of the Red Wings. Spalling up the left wing board. And offside, Martin Erath awaiting that pass on the left side. Martin Erath is one player that the Nashville Predators really depend on to score goals. He has averaged 50-plus points in the last six years, and a Czech Olympian certainly knows a little bit about scoring as well as winning. Came over from the Czech Republic and uh, played his junior hockey in Red Deer, Alberta, where they won a Memorial Cup. But Martin Erad has always been under the thorn, and been a thorn, I should say, in the uh, the rear end of this Columbus Blue Jacket team with 13 goals and 29 assists in 48 games. And that's more points than any other team in the National Hockey League. And Erad will certainly be a player the Jackets must watch. Rene with that point blank save. Here, set in front. That shot is blocked. Russell stepping up. Savard waits patiently on that right point, and that's certainly the name of his game. He shows patience beyond his view. He'll hang on to that puck, particularly on the power play, and wait for the proper time to let it go. And he's got a pretty good shot. Savard threw it across the line, pulls up on that right wing, sends one towards the net, and it's steered off to the corner. Down the right wing, this is Craig Smith, jersey number 15 out of Wisconsin, very talented newcomer on this hockey club. Long shot there, rebound set wide of the net. Kept in at the right point. A centering pass, here's Blum lets one go, kick save. And a dandy there by Mason. Blum made his National Hockey League debut last February against these Blue Jackets here in Columbus. And one of their top four defensemen, jersey number seven. Pressures puts him, best pass there. On the wing comes McKenzie, who's come back from the knee injury. And the puck swept away from him, and back come the Predators, two on two. Puck flowing into the corner there by Tutu, who steps into the linesman. Kevin Klein did a nice job of taking away that time and space on McKenzie, who, as you mentioned, just coming back from that knee injury, was really suspect whether he'd play this week. But uh, tell you what, he's one guy that you cannot keep down. He's playing on the wing with Ryan Johansson, playing the normal pivot spot on the fourth line. Those two. Accompanied by Derek Broussard, who I thought played very well, Bill, in the last three preseason games on the wing and away from his natural position of center. Now, if anybody was watching, again, you think this guy had played wing his entire life. He did an excellent job in positioning, picking pucks up along the boards. That is half the battle. Here across the line, Broussard from the left wing. Denied an opportunity to get it to the net. Lotso, jersey number two, a Finn drafted in 2005, making his debut as a member of this Nashville Predator Hockey Club. Closing in on the six-minute mark. Predators deal it on the wing here for Iraq. Kostitsin along with him. Drops it to Kostitsin. Let's a shot go. The Jackets blocked out in front of Mason. Far side of the ice, Paulson. All over Spullen. Iraq with Clifton draped all over him. Kostitsin looking to spring free. Jackets played up the left wing. Out to center. 
And that Calvert will toss it in. And that was one of the things that Scott O'Neill talked about this morning. Early in this hockey game, get the puck behind the defenseman early and then see how it plays out. Bouncing puck along the boards. Carter tying up his man. Suter now turns. Gets an arm on Carter. Leg one. Out of the pack will lead the rush. Smith on the left and the off wing. Greg Smith across the line, heads it back to leg one. First ever draft pick. Number one by this Predator Hockey Club. Jackets come down the wing. Nash on to Carter. He tried to return the feed to Nash. Back goes leg one with a backhand. Jackets get it right back. Russell and Savard paired on the point. It's away from Smith. The Jackets captain dishes to Carter across the line. He's got a wrist shot and a heavy one. And there's Rene with a save on the edge of the crease. He'll hold on and will step aside. 6.49 gone in the opening period. From Nationwide, no score. Blue Jackets and the Predator. Well, welcome back to Nationwide Arena. You can see no score, but the Department of Player Safety has done two things right now to help this game in commitment to safety, and one of them being the rounded glass where the stanchions were. Max Pacioretty last year taking a hit by Zidane O'Chara, and then the clear plastic so that you can see that puck inside this line. It was against the same Nashville team, Jeff, when the goal was called, basically called back. The officials, the goal judges, the video review could not see it. This is certainly going to help. Up high, Chris Russell throws it behind the net for Vermette. Cruising below the goal line is R.J. Umberger. He tries to get that puck from Vermette. But stepping in ahead of R.J. Umberger, the Predators then able to clear the zone. Oh, that puck bouncing off the dasher and getting away from Rene. The Jackets unable to pounce on that puck quick enough. Rene again out. Came uh, awfully close to being bumped on the play, and the Predators decide to send it down the ice, and we get an icing call. Now, time for our Romeo's Pizza Who's Hot? And nobody hotter than Fetter Tootin, who led the Jackets in preseason scoring. He was certainly relaxed through that preseason, signing that multi year deal to keep him in the city here for the next six years. And, and talking to Fetter this morning, Jeff. He really feels at home, and you know, when you have that comfort level, not only for yourself, but your family, it certainly shows, and it uh, certainly pays dividends on the ice. Now, Tootin, uh, not only leading in points, but uh, he certainly was uh, a poised member of the Jackets blue line, and let's not lose sight of the fact that last season, he led all Blue Jackets in uh, average time on ice, and we're gonna get the first power play as Nash is hauled down. And the Jackets, if there's an Achilles heel in one area of improvement, it's specialty teams. And let's start with the power play where the Jackets were 29th of 30 a year ago. Tripping against Halaschek. And you see again Rick Nash going down, Halaschek, he goes to the penalty box. The power play, it has to improve. You mentioned 29th overall at 14%. The penalty kill of the Nashville Predators, certainly one of the best, and always has been one of the best in the league. They were fifth last year at 84, almost 85%. Alice Chuck off for tripping. 7.42, the Jackets with an opportunity here on the power play. Carter in the backhand, and the save by Rene from point bank, blank green. Here's Savard, watch the line, wishes it cross ice. Better Tootin, reads at that left point, gets it back, Savard, right-handed shot. Moving into position, looking for that backdoor play almost to the goaltender. Moved quickly by Prospel. Nash up high here to Tootin, on to Savard. Here's Savard, lets one go. Shot blocked in front, Carter gets to it, Tootin will. It's Nash up along the half wall, far side of the ice. Looks for that cross ice pass for Savard. And the quick one-timer, but Smithson with the active stick is able to sweep it away. Well, earlier on, the one thing that you try to do, direct pucks as quickly as you can to that net. Carter on his back end, just a quick little play. And again, Rene coming up, with a low stick save. But good to see number seven finding a home near that blue of the crease. Attempted clear by Weber up the right wing and swept into the zone. Leguan and Erat up front. Jackets have got to be aware of those two. In a penalty killing situation, but they can certainly provide offense. Antoine Vermette across the line. Atkinson scooting into the goal line. Played up high. One-timer there by Klitson. Save Rene with a big rebound. Jackets unable to get to it. Atkinson along the wall. There's Suter. Tying up R.J. Umberger. Russell for Klitson. Klitson's attempted backhand. Knocked out of the zone. Jackets attempt 
to play it neutral ice, but it's Suter who sweeps in. One thing on that power play, they like to be able to get that puck to Klitsa. How do they do it? You'll see that puck travel along that blue line and look for number 14 for the one-timer. Russell turning it over to 2-2, who sends it back into Columbus territory. 25 seconds remain. And the Nashville penalty kill. Long left wing pass for Prosper. Sails a link to the ice. Jackets pressure the puck along the wall. Out to center. Martina doesn't have a bad shot from the right point himself. Right handed shooting defenseman. Known for his strong play defensively, but he can contribute offensively as well. Look at Prosper. Nice move. Drop pass for Nash. Henry Ned gets a piece of that one. Puck thrown ahead here. This is Martina with a shot that's wristed wide. Nash, the penalty over. Predators back at full strength. Thrown behind the net. Glove there. And yeah, that went awfully close to being called there. With the player closing his hand on the puck. The crowd certainly looking for a penalty to be called. Play whistle down. The face off outside the zone. Let's watch Nash's last chance as we go to break. for the games in your area. Now there's a big football fan, a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers. In fact, just prior to the start of training camp, he and his son, who of course attends Ohio State, was a member of that Buckeye Hockey Club. And he drove over to Pittsburgh to see the Steelers play the game early on in the year. Klein. Oh, dangerously frozen across the goal ball. They didn't like that at all. Long. Long outlet pass at center. Picked up by Klein. Swept to the right wing and offside the goal. Well, be at Nationwide Arena on Monday when the Jackets, they take on the Vancouver Canucks. Then again on Wednesday, they will host the Colorado Avalanche. Game time, 7 o'clock. Get your tickets now at bluejackets.com. And remember, you got to see it live. Face off outside the zone. Ryan Johansson, who started the preseason wearing jersey number 38. The former Portland Winterhawk wore that number 19 in junior. And he wears it proudly as a member of the Blue Jackets tonight in his NHL debut. Off the shoulder of Mason. Here's McKenzie to lead the rush. Eric Broussard across the line. Colin Wilson defending, thrown in front. Oh, boy. Loose puck there as Rene unable to grab it. Broussard with the steal. Puck thrown ahead. Broussard knocks it out of the air. And it's moved by Blum off the wall. Picked up here on the off wing. Backhanded by Smith to the far side. O'Reilly right back to Smith. Smith throws into the high slot. Suter unable to play it. Weber will. And he'll sweep it ahead here for Suter. Ryan Suter at center. Long shot. Fired wider than at Russell on Hellas Chuck. And then at O'Reilly centering pass. Looking over the shoulder there of Mason. Less than eight and a half left opening period. Shots in the hockey game favor Columbus eight to six and they're on the march to the neutral zone and across the line but offside. You know we talked about Shea Weber a lot in this hockey game but uh, when you have a tandem like Shea Weber and then Ryan Suter you've got two of the best in the biz and talking with Scott O'Neill this morning it seems like right now every team in the National Hockey League they do have that go to tandem. But these two guys have been together since that 03 draft. Ryan Suter jumped right into the National Hockey League. You had Shea Weber was seasoned in Milwaukee. They had a one won a Calder Cup there. He knows a little bit about winning and brings it on as the captain of this hockey team. David Boyle, general manager of this Predator Hockey Club, uh, of course, with us here in Columbus for tonight's season opener. And uh, he's got a tall order here. Of course, Weber went to arbitration. And he, Suter, and Rene all must be signed or re signed later on this year. Some and big house. reason why Cody Franzen and Lombardi, who scored for Toronto last night, were dealt to the Maple Leafs. Well, and again, Cody not very happy, not playing for the Leafs last night. In fact, sat in the press box and watched. But, uh, you know, you talk about guys that make commitments to organizations. Rick Nash had a chance, yes, a few years back. He could have gone wherever he wanted. It was the talk, maybe he'd go to Toronto. But at that time, he makes a commitment to the city. 
Now this organization and the city have come back and made a commitment to him. Nice faceoff win there for Vermont. R.J. Umberger looks cross ice. Shot by Mathot. Mark Mathot playing the left point, which is a little different than previous years. And the general feeling here of, of Scott Arneal is that he will play better on that left side than he has on the right. Cross ice, one timer there by Atkinson and Rene able to hang on after stopping the shot on the off wing from Cam Atkinson. And that's what you're going to see from Cam Atkinson. He's going to be one of those players, much like a Martin St. Louis, not very big, but look at the release. He gets himself into a scene. That pass goes across the ice diagonally. He has got that shot ready to go with that one timer, but a better save by Rene. Cam Atkinson. And in the words of Scott O'Neill, we played Cam with real good players to bring out his skill to see what he could do. We also played him with other guys his own age, same experience. He still was one of the better players on the ice and earns a spot in the hockey club as Rene turns aside yet another shot. This one off the stick of Mark Mathai. Pick the games you want and you can save with a Blue Jacket six game flex pack starting as low as $99. Get the best seats for Detroit, Buffalo, Boston, and more. Call 1-800-NHL-COLS or visit BlueJackets.com for more information. 7.25 remaining. Jackets have outchanced these Predators 5-1. to one. Alice Chuck, unable to cradle that puck, it goes the length of the ice and touched up here. One thing that is the M.O. here of uh, this National Hockey Club, at least in this opening period, is just send that puck out of the zone. They knew the Jackets would come in a flurry here tonight, and they have since the opening faceoff. Well, they really have, and this is one guy that's had to turn, pivot, go back. After suffering a broken ankle last year, he has come back and done a nice job, and I know Scott O'Neill very happy with uh, Chris Russell's progress through the preseason. Ryan Johansson wins the draw. So our shot was blocked. It's 2-2 on the right wing. Alice Chuck moved to the front of the net, tips it there, but Mason gets the left bat on it. In the corner, O'Reilly. Held in check, now tries to get away from Broussard, throws it in front. There's an attempt there by Klein, it sails wide. Broussard sends it around the wall, Klein settles it down, able to keep it in the offensive zone. O'Reilly throws it in front, no, Russell gets the active stick on it and keeps it away. Russell, away from Alice Chuck. Savard racing after it, 2-2. Along the wall, able to knock the stick away from Savard who will head to the bench. Two on two, Jackets. Eric McKenzie paired with Johansson. Dorsett off the bench. Eric Dorsett on the off wing. Dorsett trying to pull his way through. Two Predators in pursuit. Thrown to the point, shot by Martinic. Getting a stick on it there was Paulson. He sent it wide off the backboard as Dorsett looking for Paulson behind the net. A race for the puck in the near corner, and it's Calvert on for Paulson. Dorsett looks for some open ice. Paulson shot blocked, cleared out to center, and it's Martinic on it. Now Calvert brings it back in, offside the call, 14 minutes in to this opening period. Well, we talked about Mason and some of the changes that he's had, and Ian Clark basically has his position back in the blue of the crease but finding a way use of stick and then staying square he looks bigger in the net he's not overreacting to the puck and those see those saves right there jeff he makes it look easy face off outside the zone jeff carter in his jackets debut we've talked about the face off since the opening of this hockey game and the jackets winning 14 of the first 22 and they win another draws nash throws it back to martinez rick nash Attempted pass there for Carter, knocked down, spalling on the wing. There's Mason, and he'll hold on. 549 left, opening period, opening night from Nationwide. Jackets and their rivals. Jackets bench alongside assistant coach Brad Berry. And Brad, while you haven't dented Peck Arena yet, you've certainly gotten some good looks. You're creating time and space in the offensive zone. What has your team done effectively to get those looks? Well, I think, first of all, we're getting pucks deep on them, and we're keeping our feet moving in the offensive zone, getting into the open areas for some passes. We've had some good looks there. We just have to pull it in the back of the net and stay clean on our end. All right, Brad, thanks. Thank you. John Michael's got to dodge those hockey sticks as you saw those sticks flying in front of him during that interview and he did a pretty good job keeping his focus. Okay, stay focused as well. Both he and uh, Brad Berry sporting the same look tonight. And Brad Berry, how about a few pounds shed over the summer? Looking pretty sharp. There's a good look. We'll get a good look at that. Brad Berry spending some time 
back uh, in the West and uh, had a chance to be around family and spent a lot of time on that body getting in shape and certainly right now prepared for this year with a new defensive look. Ah, he's leading mean. Isn't he? Much like the Jackets here as they face these Predators. The first of six regular season meetings. Far side of the ice. That's Smith on the sharp angle. Mason turns it aside, clits him. All over Colin Wilson. Former first round pick that was benched for some of the playoffs last spring. Much more expected than his former first round pick. Here comes RJ Umberger. He's got Vermette and Atkinson with him. Sled ahead. Atkinson fires from a sharp angle and it's thrown right across the goal line. Bouncing puck. Smith turned around. Vermette gets it free to Umberger. Look at Atkinson scoot to the front of the net. You want to talk about a guy that's got a nose for the net. It's Cam Atkinson, all five foot seven. And it's not by surprise that he led all college players over the last two years with 61 goals. Count him. And you're right, Jeff. He, he was always around that puck. In front of Berger, and he can't redirect it by Rene. Outlet pass to center. Jackets out shooting Nashville 13 to 10, but we're scoreless. Less than four and a half left in this first. Long lead pass looking for Nash. Nash to Carter across the line. The right-handed shooting. Carter around the net with a wraparound attempt. Suter up the right wing board. Spalling with a backhand pass for Erat. Kostitz in that one offside. A delayed offside. The Predators will walk back out of the zone. Play allowed to continue. And away goes Vinny Prosper. Chops it off the glass. Bouncing puck played by Rene. And there's no further play. You know, guys, when they have the ability to try and score goals, yeah, you can beat guys around. But again, here in a situation where you had Umberger coming across the line, Umberger, all he does is direct the puck to the net. And then Atkinson, he gets a hold of the puck, lets it go, goes right through the blue of the crease. If it hits Pecorine, it's into the back of the net. Jackets have certainly had their opportunities here in this opening period. Eric Brassard. McKenzie. Battling below that goal line. Broussard comes up with a loose puck. Fights through a check. Knocked down and a delayed penalty upcoming here. Out comes Mason. Six skaters on. A tripping penalty upcoming to Nashville. Jackets will get their second power play as Rene touches up. 3.39 left. And the Jackets will go back on the power play with a tripping call against Nashville. Stefan Auger giving that signal, and here it is. They talk about keeping the legs going in that offensive zone. That's exactly what now Derek Broussard does. Minor penalty for tripping. And being able to draw that penalty, so the Jackets will go on their second power play of the night. An opportunity to try to find a way, but they're going to have to get some traffic down in front of Pecorine. Right now, he's been able to see everything, and he's made some outstanding saves, has been able to control that puck. Jackets had two power play shots in their first attempt with a penalty to Halaschuk. Here's Carter. On to Prosper. Savar moving up. Right circle. Puck ricochets in front. Savard trying to sweep it away. From the Nashville defender. And it's Blum who's able to clear the zone and send it back into Columbus territory. Fetter Tutin, Savard on the points. Carter, Nash, and Prospel who waits patiently up on that left wing. Nash, Savar, leg one pressure. He and he right up front. Savard fights three. Savar hands it over there to Suter. And it's swept back into Columbus territory with a little more than a minute left. And the penalty to Hillen. Up the left wing, Savard will take a seat on the bench. On comes Russell. Russell and Clipson now on the points. RJ Umberger, Antoine Vermette. And Cam Atkinson up front. Who will get that first goal for the Jackets? Will it be the rookie making his NHL debut who's had a nose around that net tonight in this opening period in the name of Cam Atkinson? 218 left. But Jeff, right now, the Nashville Predators doing an excellent job of putting pressure on this power play. The entries, Jackets not able to set up in that offensive zone, something that he did have success on that first power play. Look at Atkinson. Sweeps it far side. It's played by Spalling between the two Jackets. And again, thrown down the ice, 20 seconds remaining. A sellout crowd on hand for this one. Trying to encourage the Jackets to get that early lead. 
Nashville doing a good job just clearing the zone goal. Well, they are. They're very patient. That's the one thing that Barry Trotz has told his hockey team. You can have num your names changed in the back of the jerseys, but when that team comes on the ice, you know, it's the same thing. The work ethic is there and their positional play. Back at full strength are the Predators. They've killed off the first two. Columbus power play. Last season was Predator Hockey Club, fifth best at 84.9 percent in penalty killing efficiency. And a lot of that, goaltender Pekka Rene and their top two defenders in the names of, of course, Suter and his partner Shea Weber. Another guy that had a lot to do with that. How about the assistant coach Brent Peterson? Certainly a big loss for this coaching staff. Brent Peterson certainly took the time with a penalty killing unit. But right now suffering from Parkinson's not allowed to go back onto the uh, ice but is now working in that hockey ops department. Well he is uh, a super scout assistant to David Poyle and the coaching staff Brent Peterson a former National Hockey Leaguer among the teams he played for in the NHL of course the Detroit Red Wings and uh, I can tell you that Brent was an excellent penalty killer when he played the game and the man you're looking at right there briefly was Lane Lambert formerly coaching at Milwaukee who was elevated in the absence now of Brent Peterson. You know, the loyalty factor certainly has been one of part, a part of this organization for all the years that they've been in existence led by David Boyle. And of course at Milwaukee now replacing Lambert none other than former NHLer Kurt Muller. And Brent Peterson telling me in Carolina the other night that he was really impressed with Muller through the interview process. Kirk Muller wants to be a National Hockey League head coach and he's now running the number one farm club for this Nashville team in Milwaukee. Less than 30 seconds remain. That well, was going to be an interference call to Vinny Prospel. And Vinny on the way back. He turned the puck over in that offensive zone, did a nice job on being able to hustle back, but Stefan Auger felt, back in number 22, minor penalty for interference. felt that there was a little bit of an impede of progress by the Nashville Predators as that puck was going into that offensive zone. So the Nashville Predators will go on their first power play of the night last year, ranking 26th at 15.2% in the penalty killing unit of the Jackets, 22nd in the league, around 88%. Another area that Coach Scott O'Neill would like to see his hockey club improve, not being in that uh, final 10. And that number 22, killing off 81.7%. Prosper off for interference. First power play for Nashville tonight. Up high Weber. Weber, not able to keep it in, gets its first pizza. Final 10 seconds. Drop pass there for Erat on to Weber. Right handed shot sends it to the left point. Suter blocked by Vermette, handed to RJ Umberger, thrown the length of the ice and swept away. While the Blue Jackets outshoot Nashville 13 to 10 in the opening period, but Rene and Mason able to turn aside all 23 shots. Opening night in Columbus, no score between the Predators and the Blue Jackets. Penn Station, we're all about good taste. And by Ohio Health, the official health care provider of our Columbus Blue Jackets, Ohio Health. Believe in we. Season is underway. It's face-off 2011 here at Nationwide Arena. The Jackets of the Nashville Predators, all kinds of excitement. Of course, NHL Premier going over in Europe today. Scott Arneal and the Jackets anxious to get this one under their belts. And of course, tonight's telecast presented in high definition by Time Warner Cable. A power play continues. Prospel in the box for interference. First man power advantage of the night for Nashville. Jackets on the kill and it's Dorset who hammers it off the wall and away from Weber and on the way back in the Nashville territory. Suter. Paired with Weber on the point. Couple of gunslingers with some talent up front to say the least. Hornfist wrists it wide of the net. Puck played by the Jackets and Feder Tutu lifted high and out. Rene way out of the net. And left there for Weber. Less than a minute left. And the power play for Nashville. Oh, nice steal by Vermette. Great anticipation. Walks it in the wing and is denied. Juggled but held by Rene. 
What a job right there. Great anticipation through that neutral zone. And if you are patient yourself, well, things can happen. As that puck goes through the neutral zone, they try the cross ice pass, and Vermette steps up. But look at the strength as he comes down that wing. Good scoring opportunity. Tried to go on that low glove side, but a better save by Rene. Well, the summer is supposed to be the offseason, but if you're with us for our pregame show, Blue Jackets Live, Dave Metzold had a feature on Vermet at home in Quebec City, and he was on the ice for most of the week. I'd say at least five days a week, working on his skating, and he's in the superb skater, working on his stick handling, and he's pretty good in that department as well, Bill. Yeah, I asked him, I said, did you spend any time, you know, just for yourself? He said, you know, well, for the first time, I stayed around Quebec. Yes, I did work out, but I stayed off the golf course and spent more time with the family and myself. Now we're not looking for a big season, as are all these Blue Jackets. 11th year in the National Hockey League. Looking to kill off the remaining time in this. Penalty to Prosper, who's now back out. And away goes Nash. Jackets at full strength. Carter cruising behind. Nash chops it towards the net, but wide. A race for the puck, and Carter gets there ahead of Block. In the corner, it's Prosper. Leg one. Defended. Nash now. Throwing it to the point for Savard. On for the Jackets captain, bouncing puck. Carter edges ahead here for Prospel. Quickly turns, the shot is blocked. Now the matchup, the very tracks would like, would to have Weber. And of course, Suter on the points, but right now it's Klein and Blum, and they're no slouches themselves. No, it isn't, but uh, you know, and, and Scott O'Neill, when we talked to him this morning, Jeff, that was the number one thing. You get that opportunity, get that big line away from Shea Weber and Ryan Suter, you might have some success. But one thing they do have, if those guys aren't on the ice, and we saw that on the previous shift, and that's David Legwine, who certainly, over the years, been a thorn in the side of Jackets captain Rick Nash. Well, how about the IGS Energy performers in the opening period of play? We look at the two goaltenders who were perfect, Mason and Rene. Well, Pekka Rene, 28 years of age, as well as Steve Mason, just 23 last year of record. When you look, at, well, in the last few years playing against each other, well, Mason, 5 4 and 4 against the Nashville Predators. Pekka Rene, 13 games on the record as well, 9 4 and 0. But in this building, Pecorine has not put up very good statistics. Well, it will be another power play here for Nashville with a delay of game penalty assessed to Chris Russell, who's in the box. The Jackets had just killed off the previous penalty picked up by Prosper. In less than two and a half minutes into the second period, Nashville with the extra man. Weber Suter, Erat tapped in front. O'Reilly, the goal line, Martin Erat. Cross ice, shot by Suter, ricochets in front, down is Mason. Jackets send it up high, but not out. Suter, on to Erat, top of the circle. To the goal line for O'Reilly, down is Mason, looking to get back up. Hortquist capped in front of the net, and missing with the attempted shot by Weber, who had pinched in on the off wing. Far side. Jackets, Dorset, making a stick, now playing without one here. O'Reilly. Cross ice, not only the jacket shorthanded, but Dorset on the bench on the far side, unable to get to that bench. Long shot, save Mason, rebound, O'Reilly. Erat throwing it to the point, Suter. In the slot, Erat top of the circle. Martin Erat moving. Jackets looking at less than a minute left in the kill as it's sticked aside by Mason. Hornquist moving in. O'Reilly looks for Erat. Good block there by Tootin. Swept ahead. Jackets going to get it out. No, Paulson can't. Erat. Dorsett still out there off the skate of Tootin. And wide. Played back up high and again it's Suter. On to O'Reilly. This one like a five on three. Dorsett not able to do very much without a stick. Weber tees one up. Shot blocked by Martinez. He and Tootin. Outstanding defense. And there's. A penalty going to be called for Dorsett for closing his hand on the puck and sending it down the ice. He really had nothing else that he could possibly do, and he remains out there without a stick, and he'll head off here now. Out comes Rene. 
Final seconds ticking off in the Russell penalty, but the Jackets now will go right back on the penalty kill as Dorset closes his hand on the puck and by grabbing it and throwing it down the ice. Let's take a look here. Well, you can see right now hey, Dorset into a position without Number that 15 for Columbus, minor penalty, closes his hand. The key that he's trying to do, you try to look big. Notice when he comes out towards that point, you try to take away passing lanes. The other thing is you can switch back and forth with that forward up top. But right there, well, fatigue causes the brain to stop. He grabs a hold of the puck. That's a minor penalty. And the Jackets, they'll go right back on the kill. And that's three in a row for the Nashville Predators. Well, I tell you what, Dorset broke his stick very early in the penalty kill. One of the Jackets from your penalty killers. And it was for most of the two minutes that he stayed out on the ice without a hockey stick. As I said, it was very much a five on three active stick there by the Jackets who clear it. It's Derek McKenzie who gets it out of the zone. I'm back in. Along the wall Vermette. There's Mathot defending. Bouncing puck at the side of the net. Swept away by the alert Mason. Vermette off Mathot. Craig Smith for Legwan. Legwan. Kostitsen up along that half wall. Kostitsen stick handles. Out of the corner comes Legwand in front. Kostitsen cross ice pass and a goal. A power play goal by Suter. And Nashville first on the board. Oh, what a beautiful play. Again, you have two guys working down low, working a little give and go. Again, the, uh, the rookie in Craig Smith out of Wisconsin. And then you've got Kostitz. And watch the play. They work on Mathot. Mathot, well, he challenges just a little bit too much. Once you give that up and you come in, look at this bass back door. Clitsum tries to take away that shooting lane. Mason, very difficult to get from his left to right and cover it all. But again, the Jackets get caught running around and a nice job by Suter coming in from his left point position to make it a one nothing game. We have played five minutes and 10 seconds of the second period and I will say for most of the five minutes and 10 seconds, the Jackets have been shorthanded. And the end result, a power play goal by Suter. And Nashville first on the board. Russell, all over. One. One with the backhand, able to get it by Carter. And it's deep in Columbus territory as Russell comes back. Suter from Kostitsen and Legwad at 5 10. Nashville lead 1 0. Prosper on for Nash. Carter scoots to the net. Nash moves in, fires, rebound, and Rene down, and he'll hold on. Well, Rick Nash hung on to that puck, and as he comes in on the, the left-handed shot coming down that right side, he takes a look at Pecorine right away. He then also spots Carter trying to break towards that net, and his goal right now, get something on that and force the goaltender to play it. A beautiful job, though, by Pecorine up and beyond the top of the crease. A little bit different than what uh, Steve Mason is doing. Pecorine utilizes his size as well as his speed and covets the puck. Penalty upcoming here. And it, guess what? It's going to be against the Jackets again. Fourth straight penalty. This one will be a slashing call. Steve Wacom makes the call. Number two, minor penalty for Nashville. Slashing. Now it's Nashville that gets the penalty there. Umberger kind of just looked up. They allowed Nashville to play the puck for a few seconds, and it wasn't until the Jackets touched the puck the play was whistled out. You're exactly right. Laxo, he makes his way to the penalty box, and uh, the Jackets will have an opportunity right now to counter. That second unit comes out right now with Umberger, Vermette, and Cam Atkinson. And on that point position, you're going to have uh, Chris Russell as well as Grant Clitson. My apologies, but again, the officials let the play go, Bill. No, I, I agree with you totally, Jeff. Anytime that they have puck possession, well, that whistle should have gone at least five to ten seconds earlier, no question. So the Jackets are 0 for 2 in the power play with their third attempt. They've had two shots in the previous power play attempts. Clipson quickly into the zone. RJ Umberger. Umberger along the wall. Umberger to the point for Vermette. Cross ice pass. Knocked down there by Spalling. A race. Spalling and puts them long shot there. Mason steers it off into the corner. Six and a half minutes plus gone here. The second period. A little more than a minute remaining. And the Laxo penalty, R.J. Umberger. That one caught up in his feet. Weber will send it high and play whistle down. 
All rights to this broadcast are reserved and any rebroadcast, recording, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Columbus Blue Jackets is expressly prohibited. Right now, the Jackets just need to settle it down. They get their number one unit back out onto the ice. In Nashville, they match it up. Again, you see Weber as well as Suter killing against that number one unit. Better Tootin. Radic Martinez back for Tootin. Tootin, left wing feed for Prosper. Prosper along the wall, tries to feed and does get it to Tootin. Nash walks out of the corner. Savard waits patiently. Up high, Nash. The goal line, Prosper. Nash, Carter waits in that slot. Sent towards the net. Prosper, Carter with a quick shot. And that's turned aside. 36 seconds left. Again, it's Rene with a stop. Again, Carter the backhand. Rene the save. A scramble and a loose puck down is Rene the goal mouth. It's still a loose puck and play whistle down. That puck is still away from Rene and Lewis, but the official Wacom lost sight of the puck and whistles play down. You look at the opportunities that the Columbus Blue Jackets have. Well, it starts with Rick Nash and a simple play getting into the net. Now watch the position of Carter, finding a little bit of space, but look at the quickness of the release. Where does he go again? Right back to the front of the net. Not only the forehand, but the backhand side of that stick doing the job, and then he pays the price. Nice job by Carter. Good work by Nash and Prosswell to be able to get him the puck. Well, there's the second team all-star, Pecorine. Again, suffering from the flu, made the trip with the club last night. It was somewhat questionable, but in the lineup tonight, he's played superbly. He is the difference in the hockey game. Jackets have outshot Nashville 17 to 14. But Rene, at this point in time, has turned aside. All 17 shots in 10 seconds remain. Savard with number 18. That's sticked aside. Eric Broussard is a power play time. Puck thrown to the point. McKenzie racing the out of the box comes Laxo, back at full strength. Savard, the backhand, one-timer, Tootin, in front, backhanded, a scramble, right in front of the doorstep. They're calling it offside, and it certainly appeared as if Tootin had it. The fans here at Nationwide in disagreement, but play called, and we'll be right back. Power play goal at 5-10 of the second period. The difference. Nashville leading Columbus 1-0. While well, talking this morning to Scott Arneal about his goaltender, Steve Mason said, hey, goaltending is the big story in the National Hockey League. You've got to have it to have success. We need Mace to step up, and we hope he will play the way we think he is capable of playing. He's had a good camp. He's had a good preseason. I'll certainly say that. 4-0 with a 1.98 goals against average and a 9.34 save percentage. But talking earlier on during the preseason, Bill, with Scott Hauser, the Jacket general manager, said, hey, we need to talk in terms of Mason being consistent all year long. Exactly. And, and the one thing that goes along with that, Jeff, is the ability to control the things that he can control and let those other things kind of just slide off his back. That's part of his maturity. Well, a wicked bounce. And that certainly fooled Rene, but the Jackets unable to get to that puck. Crowd looking for a penalty call as Calvert was hooked. Far side, Martinic. Dorset got a piece of that puck, but sent it wide. Erat chops to the corner. Jackets pressure deep in Nashville territory. Erat tosses to the far side. Paulson all over Klein. Sammy Paulson, one of three Jackets to play all 82 games last season. R.J. Umberger, of course, was one, as was Antoine Vermette, and it's Umberger who carries it in and across the line. He scored in each of the last two openers. Can he make it three in a row? The Jackets looking for the game time goal. Colin Wilson, able to make the play. R.J. Umberger at the line, had that puck taken away by Blum. Mark Mathot, puts it. On to Umberger, puck hops over his stick. Blum, headmans, right side comes Wilson. Pressuring is Cam Atkinson, giving up some size, but finishes his check nonetheless. Far side of the ice to the near corner. A centering pass. Played up high here by Wilson. Settles it down. Wrist shot. That's wide. Nashville behind the net. Leg one. Leg one throws it in front. Wilson is there. It's at the side of the net. And Mason will cover up and we'll get a face off. Now, 
before the Jackets hit the ice, get ready to carry the flag on Blue Jackets Live on Fox Sports Ohio. Blue Jackets Live is brought to you by your Central Ohio Toyota dealers. Well, there's a look at uh, Steve Mason. We just talked about, uh, again, having Ian Clark come in and do a job. And, you know, when just chatting with him, Jeff, you and I have had a chance to sit down and talk. He's a different man. He's, he has matured immensely. And I think having somebody else, new ideas, new things, he's able to really flush out some of the demons that have been part of his game the last couple of years. 23 years of age. we got to remember that. Of course, posted 10 shutouts and a one Point two nine goals against average in his rookie year to win that Calder Trophy. It came pretty easy to him. And after a couple of disappointing seasons, and he'd be first to tell you, he's looking for that consistency we spoke of just moments ago. And he's certainly capable of that. He is one smart young man. He sure is. And again, certainly took a big step here this summer. And again, as a uh, you talk about a young goaltender and being able to buy a house and doing the things that he does. Well, Rick Nash. They had a chance to spend a little bit of time together. They trained together. But the captain, Rick Nash, on a line tonight with Prospel and Carter. They're waiting to see how the chemistry is going to come between number seven and number 61. Certainly some great opportunities. And in that face-off circle, Carter continues to dominate. Jackets as a team have certainly held a territorial edge and face-off wins here tonight. The centering pass goes off Carter. Bouncing puck, Nash reaching for it. Thrown behind the net, Hornquist. Pinned along the wall there by Russell. Tries to fight through. Russell defending. Smiths it to the point. Locking the line. There's a shot. That knocks the mask off Mason, but he has the presence to hold on. And watch this shot as we go to break. Mason takes it right off the mask. Blocked in front by Hornquist, but fights it off. 9-11 remaining in the middle period. The Predators have a 1-0 lead. John Michael alongside assistant coach Todd Richards. Todd, you've gotten some quality scoring opportunities, both at even strength and on the power play. Rene's been big in goal. What's it going to take to beat him here tonight? Well, we just have to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, you know, Nashville's... A Doing a good job clogging up the middle. Uh, when we're getting opportunities, uh, Renee's making the saves right now. Uh, but we have to just keep keep getting pucks in that, keep getting bodies in that, and hopefully we'll get one through. All right, Todd, thanks. Thanks. We talked about the addition of Ian Clark, but how about the addition of Todd Richards coming in and helping out with the power play, a defenseman himself at the University of Minnesota, as well as those years in the pros. And with head coach experience, what a compliment to Scott O'Neill. Well, his head coaching experience right there in Minnesota. That's where we're headed right after this one. Todd will make his first visit back to the XL Energy Center, former head coach of the Wild. And he will be a popular figure in that building. He's a popular, uh, as you mentioned, former college player there. And family is there, and we'll get a chance to visit with him tomorrow right off the top of the telecast. And the Wild. Now their home opener scheduled tomorrow and hosting these Blue Jackets. But right now, the subject matter at hand, beating Nashville. The Jackets trail 1-0 with 8.15 left. Left wing feet picked up here by Ryan Johansson. Head for Brassard. Leg on the steal. Thrown into the slot. Off Johansson. Up thrown. Hillen caught there by Brassard. McKenzie finishes his check. Mathot steps up. Zone clear. Johansson hands it back to Klitsum and the Jackets with another broken stick. Klitsum will head off. The thought hangs back. McKenzie with the forecheck. Far side of the ice, that's Craig Smith. On the Wisconsin stand-up. Had an impressive camp. Broussard. Johansson. Chopped away, Colin Wilson. Russell steps into him, and it's played by Broussard. 7-18 left. Derek Broussard. Locks in front of Mason. Throws it ahead here for R.J. Umberger. Jackets encouraged by the crowd to get something going offensively. Well, they really do. They really have to try and get something going. They've continued to get shots on, and I like what Todd Richards said. Continue to do what you're doing. You just have to right now take the eyes away from Pecorini. Five minutes plus of that opening. Second period here. Jackets forced to kill off three. 
Successive penalties. And on the third, Nashville cashes in. That's the difference. The Suter goal. Savard reaches for it. Jackets come up with it. R.J. Umberger, left wing pass for Vermet, just beyond his hockey stick. Long lead pass, knocked down by the Jackets. Good anticipation there by the youngster Atkinson. Dumps in deep. Crossbow turned around on the play. Play there by O'Reilly. O'Reilly out to center. Leads the rush. Nashville center tosses it off into the corner and then races to the bench. Better two. On to Nash. Nash, Prosper, and Carter. The three cross the line. Nash tries to stick handle his way through. It's poke checked away by Suter. And up that left wing to center. A lead pass knocked down by Martin Erath. Spalling. In by Carter. Pustitsen is there looking to fish that puck free. Jackets will play it. Nash, Prosper. Right back to Nash. Left wing jumping up in the play. Tootin. Back for Carter. You can see Prospel trying to get a stick on it, and I've got a feeling it may be Prospel. Well, from this angle up here, it looked like Tootin, but that last angle there, Billy, with a sharp eye, it very well could be Prospel. It doesn't matter. What's important, the Jackets have tied it up. But it was initially the Carter shot that squirted between the wickets of the goaltender, Rene, and we're tied at one, and this crowd is back in it. Mark Mathai, off the left wing. Indeed, Prospel, playing his first game as a Blue Jacket, cashes in, signed after the injury to Christian Husalius, and playing as expected, Vinny Prospel, playing his 979th game, has his 228th career NHL goal. Prospel from Carter and Nash. Now you look on the bench and look at the smile of Vinny Prospel. Well, Vinny comes over when Christian Husalias injures the shoulder, but look at the play coming in. Beautiful drop pass. It was a three on three scenario, and that's where the Nashville Predators, they let down on that reload as Carter positioned himself, got himself in front to be able to get away. Oh, there wasn't a hard shot. But it was a quick shot that really stymied Pecorini. And the rebound coming to Prospel who buries it. Huh? Two of the Jackets newcomers. Prospel signed as a free agent. Carter acquired in a trade from Philadelphia. Pick up their first points as Blue Jackets. And of course, the captain, Rick Nash, with a second assist. And the Jackets score on the rush. And we're tied 1 1 with less than five left. Second period. Nashville. Shot by Weber. It goes off Mason. Made at the left point. Suter. Leg one. Back for Suter. Suter looking. Shot towards the net. Mason's got it. Scramble in front, and it's a goal. Backhanded by Mason as the jacket scrambled in front. And the Predators have quickly regained the lead. Here's a good look exactly how they do it. And take a look up top. Stop it there, guys, if you can, because what you've got, you've got leg one right in the middle of the ice, and he's in a position right now to get the puck. And as he does so, well, it's a simple play towards the net. And then you again, you've got convergence by the Preds. Mason, well, he fights it. He sees it. It lays behind him. And then you look at Craig Smith. You talked about him, Jeff, all night. The youngster out of Wisconsin played a couple of years, but he had a great world championship championship where he scored three goals and three assists in the seven games played. They signed him to a contract and tonight gets a big goal for the Preds. His first National Hockey League goal and tonight his NHL debut. 
And a little more than a minute after the Jackets had tied it up. Why Nashville has regained the lead at one. One more look as Vinny Prospel gets a stick on it after Rene makes the initial stop and sends it across the line ahead of Fetter two. Take a look at the coaches behind the bench and Scott O'Neill talked this morning about this Nashville Predator hockey team. He said even with the loss of Mike Fisher, one of their premier players in their hockey team, this is one team that does not change much. They work hard. They're very responsible at all ends of the ice. And the one thing that you have to be is patient because they are. They'll take advantage of mistakes and their transition game bled by their defense is certainly one of the tops in the league. Now we've seen this act before. They know they're not going to be a high flying offense. They know that they must rely on their defensive side of the game and wait for the scoring opportunity. And they've done that with a great deal of regularity throughout their 12 year existence in the National Hockey League. Well, the defending is just outstanding. They don't give you a lot of space. Their defense stand up at that uh, defensive blue line. They try to take away the speed. The left wing. Puck thrown into the zone. Behind the net, Mark Mathai. And for Grant puts him, O'Reilly sweeps it ahead. Nash waits for it. Nash will chop it out to center. Three minutes, ten seconds remain. Second period. The players are slipping all over the ice here right now. Mark Mathai. Beautiful day here in Columbus today. Temperatures uh, in the 80s. I'm wondering here with a packed house. That ice is getting a little soft here right now. One thing that they've done, they have shaved that ice down. They put in the new logos, and uh, right now that is going to be the uh, the job of the staff to keep it sharp. Here comes Umberger across the line. Oh, Vermette waiting in that slot. Now races behind the net. Vermette will play it in front. Cam Atkinson. Vermette out muscle by Weber. Here is Tootin with a wrist shot high and wide of the net. 225 left. R.J. Umberger walks out of the corner, looks for Cam Atkinson, and that one-timer. An alert stick there by the Predators, and the Jackets have got to regroup. Martinez knocked down by Spalling. Gets back up. Jackets have cleared. Broussard with an open bench on the national side. Picks up the loose puck, crosses the line. Derek Broussard tries to feed Martinez, who jumps in. Knocking down the defender behind the net, Laxo. Martinez retreats to the right point. Antoine Vermette scoops up the loose puck. Racing for it there is Derek McKenzie to finish a check. The goal now, just being it out, Smith from Weber and Suter at 15.56. Wilson in front, Smith denied. The quick alert play there of Steve Mason. Turned around on the play there by Smith. No penalty call. Listen to the crowd here. Broussard, nice move. Derek Broussard dishes it off. Shot blocked. Our side of the ice dangerously thrown in front. It'll play, be played by Wilson. Up the left wing boards for Legwad, and he'll chop it in. Well, right now, Scott O'Neill utilizing four lines out there. And uh, again, that fourth line with Broussard, Johansson doing a nice job of containment. Not throwing up the left wing. Less than a minute to go. Weber at center. Headman's that pocket swept out quickly by the Jackets and offside the call. Fans be at Nationwide Arena on Monday when the Jackets will take on the Vancouver Canucks and then again on Wednesday they host the Colorado Avalanche game time 7 o'clock. Get your tickets now at BlueJackets.com. You got to see it live. Off at center ice. The Carter line out there with Prospel and Nash, and the puck's fired up out of the Nashville bench. There's no further play. 47.9 seconds remaining. Rick Nash and Carter. What a one two combination. Carter fifth in goals over the last four seasons with 144. Nash is sixth, just one goal behind at 143. Between the two of them tonight, already seven shots on goal. and. Uh, that's what you want to get, each with a point in this hockey game. They have assisted on the goal by that man, Vinny Prosper. Martinez looks to the left wing for Prosper, broken up by Tutu. 
Drop back to Martinez. 2-2 coming quickly. We'll find Fetter to Keeping pressure. Handed to Martinez. Away from O'Reilly. Prosper left wing at center. Nash trails. On to Nash. Nash moving in on that left wing. Poke check there by Weber. Trotz has that matchup he wants. Weber and Suter against Carter and Nash. Carter behind the net. Locks up. Turns. And rifles it wide of that far corner. Shot by Martinik off the stick of Prospel as the horn goes. And Vinny Prospel sweeping it across the goal line for the lone jacket goal. He'll join John Michael when we rejoin you here at Nationwide on Fox Sports Ohio. Predators by a goal, two to one after 40. First time ever, these Central Division rivals meet on opening night in the National Hockey League. Vinny Prospel, tonight's goal scorer as he edges it across the line after Rene makes the initial save. On jacket centerman, Jeff Carter. Never met line. Lumberger and Atkinson cross the line. This one, high over the glove of Rene. Shot by Vermette. Atkinson got a stick on it, but deflected it wide. Early moments of period number three. Martinez on for Vermette. Vermette looks to the left wing for Atkinson. That pass fails. Settling it down. Klein. Blum delayed offside. Waved off. As his own cleared by Nashville. O'Reilly with the turnover. Thrown in front. Backhanded and a goal. The Jackets turn it over. And Hellischuk gets a backhander by Mason. 3 1 Predators. Oh, you hit it right on, Jeff. Again, the Jackets, a little lackadaisical coming back into their own zone. And again, Fetter Tootin, all he does, he goes back, he takes a look. Hallis Chuck puts a little bit of pressure on, and what do they do? Well, O'Reilly comes in, he supports the puck, and then right back towards the net. But watch Hallis Chuck as he comes out, finds himself into an open spot, and a beautiful spin around a backhand beats Mason. And early here in period number three, they make it a 3-1 hockey game. Boy, is that a huge goal for Nashville. Carter in the faceoff circle, losing the drop to O'Reilly and the Jackets. They're in a hole here, down by two in the early moments of period Nashville number three. Puck gloved ahead, and play Colorado whistle down. Well, our AEP power play summary through 40 minutes of play. Nashville one for three, three shots. Suter, the power play goal. The Jackets certainly had the opportunities. Rene stands tall, turning aside all five shots. Yeah, they did a nice job. The Nashville Predators moved that puck around, utilized that triangle high at that blue line with Leguan positioned in the middle of the ice and cross ice pass to Suter, who found Pater. Well, Carter got the shot in on Rene, and uh, the patient showed there. This guy. Has done it all here tonight. He leads all players. That's his sixth shot in the hockey game. And how dominant has he been in the faceoff circle? 84%. He has won 16 of 19, and he wins another draw there. 17 to 20. Huh. The Jackets right now, though, need to lead in another statistical department, and they've got to get some goals. Tonight's telecast brought to you. In high definition by Time Warner Cable. Well, I talked to Carter this morning about faceoffs, Jeff, and if you can remember correctly, when we played the Philadelphia Flyers in their building, and Carter scoring right off of the draw, ending up beating the Jackets, I believe, in a 3-2 hockey game, he said he remembered that distinctly because when he came out in that hockey game, they gave him the position to do it, and he buried it, caught everybody by surprise. In fact, even you and I. Well, Matthew Garon was the goaltender that night, and I too remember that. And uh, Matthew will admit later, of course, now in Tampa, that he was looking up at the scoreboard at the last replay. And he never really got set when the puck was dropped. And that quick snapshot by Carter found the back of the net. Good memory there, Bill. It was something that really stood out. And then Chad yeah, today, sad. I was really surprised that he remembered it. He said, no, he said, that's one goal I remember. It's something he likes to do every once in a while. Quick shot there, top of the circle, and it's turned aside. The glove save with Mason. Well, fans get a ticket, a $10 food and beverage voucher, Blue Jackets hat and more, starting at just $30 every Friday game with a Tim Hortons Jackets pack. This is a savings of $28. Get your Tim Hortons Jackets pack for Friday, October the 25th, versus the Detroit Red Wings, now at BlueJackets.com. 
Draw one by Nashville, and uh, certainly after the Jackets came out with a flurry and dominated most of this first period, Predators came out in the second, out shooting Columbus 12 to 9. Right now they're carrying the play. The Jackets find their way into the offensive zone. They've got to get something going offensively here. As we approach the three minute mark. Rene. Out the left. Toss to the far side. Hillen gets it ahead. Kostitsen looking for Hornquist. Lead pass there for Dorset. Eric Dorset across the line. High off the glass. Played by Nashville. Outlet pass. And looking for Kostitsen away from Fetter too. Martinic. Settles it down. Gets it ahead to Antoine Vermette. R.J. Umberger angles ahead. Umberger behind the net. Atkinson waits patiently in the slot. Telly's a shooter, poised and ready. Now steps behind. Cam Atkinson walks out. Cycling. This is R.J. Umberger. Umberger. Chased by Blum. Up high, Vermette. Right back to Umberger. Atkinson can't control that backhanded pass. And it's tossed out of the zone. And right now, they try to set up in that offensive zone, begin to cycle a little bit. I'm telling you right now, the National Predators, they are patient. All they're trying to do, they keep the puck along the perimeter. And here's a little look at exactly what the National Predators do, and they do a nice job. And stop it right here, gentlemen, because what you've got, the defense standing at the blue line. The other defenseman is there. So what are the options that the Jackets have? Get it deep. And then you're going to have to go after it. You're going to have to use the speed and get physical on their defense. If you get it by them, then you've got to come in and you've got to make sure you've got people helping each other out. That's a great look. Right now, looking the way things look for his club is the man you just saw behind the bench there, Barry Trotz. Closing in on 1,000 games behind the national bench. Fourth most for one team in NHL history. Puck chopped towards Rene and the Nashville net cycling out. This is Carter. Carter away from Suter. Carter throws it in front. Tied up there was Prosper. And he looked for a penalty to be called for hooking. Walking right there. Did not make the call. Two jackets collide. Russell and Nash. And as a result, a turnover and Tutu gets sent in. Jackets a little discombobulated right now. They're now just trying too hard. And uh, that's again, Vinny Prospel said it between periods two and three. Right now, just get back to this simple game. And it is. He says the one thing that you want to do, continue to direct pucks to the net. You don't have to be hard, but you'll find rewards as the game goes on. Russell turned it over, got it back. This time tosses to the far side there for Savard. And the Jackets back on their heels here as play is whistled down. You know, Barry Trotz and chatting with him this morning, I asked him how the summer went. He said, you know what, Bill, it was one of the toughest summers I've ever had. First of all, they lose Wade Belak, one of their prime players that played with them. But also, his oldest son came down with a thyroid condition and was very sick. In fact, got down to 77 pounds. They had no idea what it was. They first, certainly uh, went through every diagnosis. He gets back, and right now, he is going to be back in school as of Christmas. And uh, all the best to Barry and family. Certainly a tough, tough situation for the uh, Trox family, no question. Jacket fans, stay tuned for tonight's Miller Lite Taste Greatness Moment. Coming up a little bit later on here in the telecast. 3-1 Predators lead. Goal we'll 39 seconds into this third period opens up the two-goal lead. After uh, rookie Greg Smith at 15-56 of the second scored a little more than a minute after the Prosper goal that tied it for the Jackets and followed up on a power play goal in the second by Suter. 15-21 remaining third period. Mark Mafat to Prosper. Nash drop pass for Carter. Right back to Nash. Nash firing. And the shot was blocked. Committing there was Klitson in off the point. He has to hustle back for it at the line. Smithson steps into him and it's Prosper on to Nash. Nash moving in. Drops the pass there for Prosper. May have in fact lost it there off his stick. 
Mark Mathot sets it up, fires, and that one deflected by Carter in front, sent wide. Nash again off the wall, tripped up there by Smith, and that'll draw a penalty, and a huge power play needed here. Tripping to Smithson as he hauls down the Jackets captain. Well, Smithson's a player moving out of the center position, playing on the wing, and uh, this is exactly what you want to do in that offensive zone. Keep the legs moving in that situation. Rick Nash able to draw a penalty as Jared Smithson. He'll go off two minutes for tripping, and the Jackets, that'll be their fourth power play of the night. They're 0 for 3 with five shots in their previous power plays. 5.21, the time of the penalty. Puts him on to Russell. Shays to the right wing. Cam Atkinson settles it down on the half board. Atkinson moving in. Looks cross ice to Russell. Let's it go. Blocker pad saved there by Rene. Sprawling across the goal mouth. Russell settles it down. Puts it. One timer off RJ Umberger. Loose puck in front and it's swept wide with Rene out of position. Puts it. Russell. Umberger stick breaks. Puts him. Let's one go. That's deflected and wide. Vermeck to the point for Russell again. Umberger's got some new lumber. Shot by some blood by Renee. He'll hold on. 124 left in the Smithson penalty. Well, the Jackets doing a nice job, and what do they do? They get the puck from low to high. D to D if they can, and the one-timer by Klitsum. Look at the traffic down in front of Pecorini. That's exactly what you want. And Pecorini, well, he owes Shea Weber a dinner because watch this save by Weber in the blue of the crease, able to turn it away. But a nice job by Umberger getting down and in front of big goaltender Pecorini. Nash all over Klein. Able to steal that puck, rimmed around to the point here for Fetter Tootin. Tootin on for Carter. Prospel capped in front. Carter, Nash, got away from him. Savard, Tootin, one-timer, and his stick. Showing a little bit too much flexibility there. Couldn't get it off. The timing of that one-timer. When you move that puck across the ice in that condition right there, about 65 feet. A little softer, maybe. Here's Nash across the line. Carter trailing. Nash pulls up. Tootin. Looking for Nash. Broken up and then hammered down the ice by Leguan. Mason will settle it down. His pass knocked down by O'Reilly. Jackets final 30 seconds of the power play. Savar looking. That's Vermette across the line. R.J. Umberger. The point. Jackets, Russell and Klitsum. Klitsum watched the line, on to Vermette. Umberger capped in front, shot. Ricochet's wide, played off the backboard. Umberger, right wing. Umberger turns, deals to Vermette, on to Klitsum. Left side, Russell in front. Active stick there by Weber, is able to clear. Smithson steps out of the penalty box, and the Predators are perfect four for four on the kill. No, that last power play, Jack is just trying to move that puck and try to find seams. Again, to the net, hopefully put it into the feet. You never know. 12-25, left third period. Predators lead by two. Three one Nashville lead time for tonight's Miller Lite taste greatness moment uh, and it is the Jackets first goal of the season off the stick the newcomer Vinny Prospel at that point giving the Jackets a one one tie Predators have added two of their own and lead by a pair three one here with 12 25 left third period well, the transition game certainly implemented by Scott O'Neill. He wants the defense up into the play. He wants people involved. But right now, the Jackets have to find a way to get to the blue of the crease on goaltender Pecorino. Ryan Johansson throws it in front. Bit of a change here in the third period. You see Ryan Johansson playing with Calvert and Derek Broussard. Derek McKenzie no longer on this line. Well, go inside the glass and into the locker room of your hockey team every Monday night at 6 and Blue Jackets slap shots. Join Ray Crawford as he reviews the previous week of the Jackets action and brings the inside stories and gets the inside scoop on what's happening on and off the ice. The Blue Jackets slap shots every Monday at 6 on the home of the Blue Jackets, Fox Sports Ohio. Derek McKenzie coming back from a minor knee injury, at least for this shift. 
Not playing here on the kick line. Oh, nice shot there by Broussard. Low, but down is Rene and makes the stop. There's one guy that had a great preseason with Derek Broussard, and you can see him getting across that, lane, uh, that line. And what does he have? He has the head up. He takes that and directs it to the net. Again, not hard, but what he does, he's able to hit the net. He forces Pecorine to play the puck. And you never know. Again, it may go off a glove. It may go off a pad. That's the one thing. Shoot the puck. And Vinny Prospel said it more than once in that interview with John Michael between periods two and three. Better Tootin with an attempted shot that goes off the heel of the stick and wide. Prosper picks it up off the backboard in front off the goal post. Oh boy, Rene never saw it. He had him beat, but it went right off the inside of the iron. Weber, quick wrist shot there from Prosper. See why he's closing in on 300 National Hockey League goals. He does know about shooting pucks. Mason down, and he'll cover up. Well, the Toyota keys to the game tonight. Well, the team motto was to earn it, and uh, you want to be able to leave nothing on this ice when 60 minutes plus are over. Excellence, it's not an act, it's a habit. You create good habits, and if you do that, winning certainly can come, and come naturally. And patience versus patience. The excitement of opening night versus a foe and a team, but that's what they built their game on. Patience through the neutral zone and making transition back the other way. Right now, the National Predators with a 3-1 lead. That early goal in the start of this third period, Jeff, has really put the Jackets back on their heels. Taking the crowd, a sellout crowd, out of the game as well. Looking for something to get them back in this one. You get to play, though, the midway point of this third period. Derek McKenzie now out there with Sammy Paulson. Dorset. So a little minor tweaking of the lines. Our Ohio Health great save. And it's Carter with the shot. And Rene with the stop with a scramble in front. Well, and you can see Carter again both times. He gets a shot on goal. First the forehand and then a little backhand chipper that gets Rene down. But again, Rene, if you look to his left or hit to his right, he had some uh, helpers to be able to clean house. Jackets are doing a pretty good job in front of uh, Rene, who again did not see that last shot. Again, that one was off the mark. There's the Prosper shot moments earlier, glanced off the inside of the goalpost, and he never saw that one either. Becca Rene, somewhat of a doubtful starter, at least as uh, the Predators wing their way to Columbus last night, suffering the effects of the flu, but. He wasn't going to miss the opener tonight, and he has been outstanding. He certainly has. And, uh, you look at the tandem of Pekka Rene and Lindbach, well, the tallest goaltender tandem in NHL history. Lindbach, six foot six, Pekka Rene at six five. Weber throws it up the middle. It goes off the stick of Savard. Hands to Chris Russell. Left wing RJ Umberger. Tried to feed Vermette on the turnover. The steal by Umberger away from O'Reilly. Long lead pass here for Cam Atkinson on the right wing. Knocked away very calmly by Suter. And then the Jackets dump in behind the net where it'll be left for Suter by Rene. Weber pitching along the wall. Umberger will thwart that attempt. Suter spalling away from Vermette. Balling hustles into the zone. Mason out of the net. Crowd trying to encourage the Jackets here. We trail by two, and we are all but up the midway point as Cam Atkinson dumps in. Rene out of the net. Yeah, quick line changes right now. You can see the legs. Their first night, the emotions are out of the game. It's all conditioning right now. Jackets have to keep it short and sweet. Nash now on that turnover. Lifts it high over Prosper. Carter, nice move along the wall. Jeff Carter, wrist shot. Block. Thrown back in front of the goal! Vinny Prosper, there was a quick dash. I believe Nash got the quick stick on it. And the Jackets have cut the deficit to one with 9.41 remaining. And Rene right now, a little back on his heels. Well, the work, it all starts with, again, Carter with the puck. He creates his own space, but look at the job. They have man-to-man, -man and they are tight, but Prosper, all he does is try to force it in front. Within one. 
one. 9.41 to go here in the third period. Ash, that'll be his first. Crossbow. And Carter will draw the assist. We'll wait for it officially. But the Jackets have got the crowd back in it. And it's a one goal hockey game. The Columbus goal is scored by number 61. First assist. And Carter, the second, who's got his second helper of the night. 10 19, the time of the goal. Now the Jackets back in this one. McKenzie, Dorset, and Paulson. McKenzie off the wall, looks for Klitson. Jackets create traffic in front of Rena. Paulson, Dorset. Eric Dorset. And the puck taken away. Moved up the left wing for Smithson. Out to center. And listen to this sellout crowd. Vermette. Tammy Atkinson moving in. Atkinson goal mouth pass there. Here's a shot by Tilton. Off the goaltender, Rene. And the Jackets look awfully different here right now. Well, you get the crowd behind, Jeff, and you just mentioned it. You listen to Nationwide Arena opening night. You're within a goal. You've just scored the goal to get him involved. Now you want to continue to build on that. Centering pass. R.J. Umberger. Nice move along the wall. Touch pass there. This is better Tootin. And Tootin wrists in. Rene. Out of the net. Backhanded, back into the corner for Met, for Rick Nash. Nash fights through. Nash fires off the stick of Vermette. Second attempt. Rebound Prospel. And he tried to roof it and went off the chest of Rene over top of the net. Jackets all around the Nashville net. Rick Nash fights off the check. Nash to the point. Penalty upcoming here to Nashville. Out comes Mason. Six skater on. The Jackets are all over. Predators right now. Carter comes off the bench. On to Clitson. Carter. Nash knocked down. There could be a second penalty. Let's wait and see. We'll go to break. It appears that just one penalty despite Nash being hauled down. Nash with a celebration. A power play on the other side. Well, the Jackets come awfully close to tying up this game. Watch Vinny Prospel try to roof it. A scramble in front. It goes off Rene and high. That is Smith in the penalty box for hooking the Jackets fifth power play of the night. They are 0 for 4 with eight shots. An opportunity to tie it up. Nash. Captain front crossbow. Tooting off the point. And the puck is deflected. It was off the netting and a faceoff will come to Rene's right. And this job by the Nashville Predators. You talk about active sticks taking away the seams and Right now, the Jackets trying to look back door to that left defenseman, in this case, Fetter Tootin coming in the back door. Tootin and Klitson. So Klitson has an opportunity here on the number one power play alongside Tootin. Quick shot. Love Rene. Lines, throws it around and out. 1.33 left. Uh, Smith Pedley in the Jackets power play. Pressure coming. Leg wand and Erat. Two outstanding penalty killers. Puts it off his skate. That of Halaschuk. Now Nash moving into position in front. Prospel in a quick attempt. Suter dumps it down. A little more than a minute left. Jackets change up the power play unit. Umberger, Atkinson, Vermette up front. Puts it. Vermette. Across the line, Russell puts it on the point. And puts it. Cross ice off the Nashville player. Played there by Vermette. It goes off Erat. The Jackets will have to regroup. Well, you can't get too cute. You get near that blue line, that puck has to get right back.
down low again. You can go low, get it right back high again, force the penalty killers to move. And Matt Atkinson in the near corner. Russell can't make the play at the right point. And there's less than 30 left. Nashville change up the kill. Jackets move up ice. Atkinson offside. Vermette as he tried to feed Umberger. Well, the eighth pick overall back in 2008. Cam Atkinson. He hovers around five foot seven. But I'm telling you, put him into a tight position down low. I asked Mark Mathot, what's it like going against a guy like Atkinson? He's able to spin, he's able to turn. He's the, the most difficult players to try and contain because of that fact. I know Scott O'Neill believes in the ability of Cam Atkinson. This guy's going to have a, uh, a good pro career. Let's hope he can get off to a great start with this hockey team. Now family in attendance here tonight. Nice to get the Jackets even here. And if it's one of the three rookies that score, so be it. And now the Jackets like anybody to get anybody, this one tied up. Somebody, somebody just step forward. Penley over, Smith steps back on. He'll play the puck inside his own zone. Jackets 0 for 5 on the power play, and that's the difference right now in the hockey game. Predators with a one goal lead able to cash in on one of their manpower advantages. And right now, a shot from a sharp angle sent wide. Weber tees one up. Scramble. Loose puck. Crossbow. And a break for Nash. No, just getting a stick on it there with Suter. Now Suter forearms Nash. Nash goes back oh, at baby. it. There's an elbow. No blood, no foul, Jeff. They're letting him play. Loger was right there and saw it, but did not whistle play down. And Nash and Suter go at it again. 440 left. Yeah. Albert now with a chance. Nash fights through. Down is Rene. Loose puck still. And it's picked up by Kostitsin. Nash is out of gas. A great shift by the Columbus captain. And he's back on the bench here. And we'll see him shortly. Here's Mathot. Mark Mathot. A little more than four minutes remaining. Mathot. Off the wall, throws it deep. Pecorino. On for Blum. Blum steps away from Ryan Johansson. There's Leguan, right wing feed. Wilson on the left. Long shot, sails wide to Mason. Laid up high and kept in by Blum. Leguan. Smith. Greg Smith. Ridden off in the play. Leguan walks out. Leguan. In front, Smith, that's off the crossbar. Right off the crossbar, Smith just wound up and let one go from the hash mark. Drop pass, leg one, goes off Martinez. Vermette turning around, leg one. They battle and the jacket's clear. They called with 3.20 left as the Predators dump in. Watch this Nash opportunity. Oh, so close. You guys are really loud. Really loud. The score. Nashville leading. Face off at center ice. 320 left. And up the middle looking for Antoine Vermette. There's a race for the puck. Klein gets there ahead of the jacket center. Over the stick of Chris Russell. And back into Jackets territory. Russell to Klitson. Klitson looks to that right wing, tried to feed Vermette, broken up, carried in. O'Reilly. O'Reilly towards Mason, steered aside. Hallis Chuck, whose goal right now is the difference in the hockey game. He'll throw it in front, tick ahead, but wide of the net. Russell off the skate of Vermette, bouncing puck. Carried into the zone, 2-2 on the off wing. Jordan 2-2 pulls his way in front. Jackets break it up. And it's handed to Atkinson, a little handcuffed on that pass, a little high, and it's back to neutral ice. 2-20 showing on the clock. Spalling sends it over top of the net on the deflection. Kostitsin kept away by Carter. Now Russell. On for Klitsum. Russell will head off. Clicks him to his own blue line. Prosper looks for Carter, who chops it in the rest of the way. Weber away from Nash. 
Tootin in off the point. Prosper is there. And he Prosper likes to work in tight quarters. He's doing that right now with Weber all over him. Throws him to the ice. Carter walks out of the corner. Carter pinned. Gets it to Tootin who drills it wide. Great work. How about that long stick of Carter? Maybe to sweep that puck to Tootin. And the quick hands to be able to get it there. Carter. Encouraged by the crowd with 120 left. Throws it over to the national bench. All kinds of predator players. The crowd looking for a penalty for too many men on the ice. Jeffrey on. Dumps in. Played by Mason. Little more than a minute left. We'll look for Mason to make his way out of the net here shortly. The Jackets can sustain some pressure in the offensive zone. And it's for side. Nice move. Dishes it off to Umberger. Umberger tried to settle it down. Mason's out of the net. Predators have it. They move it to center. Backhanded. And then Leguan chops it the rest of the way. Jackets have got to move up ice quickly. Savard. Six skaters on. Savard falls but is able to send it into the zone. It goes off Klitsum played by the Predators. He wraps. Smithson down that right wing. Savard is back. Klitsum comes back and makes the play. On to Broussard. Less than 30. Off the left wing. Derek Broussard moved to the wing here this season. Long shot gloved by Rene. He tries to waste some time by leaving the puck exposed before covering it up. Our Timberland play of the game. Right now, the difference, the Hallis shot goal. Well, back at 39 seconds to start period number three. A turnover by Tootin, he knew it. And then, well, just a simple little play as you go towards the net, backhand flapper, and Hallis check on the backhand, beats Mason. Right away, they got the momentum. And for the first 10 minutes of this third period, it was all Nashville. They took the crowd out of it until Nash scores his first of the year. Todd Richards designing a play here with 18.6 seconds remaining. The faceoff will come in the Nashville zone. Defensively, Lane Lambert. He's got his hockey club. Designing what they intend to do here. Jackets dominating in the faceoff circle tonight. Winning 41 of 71 faceoffs. And the leader is Carter. He's going to take this draw, and it's important. It is imperative. The Jackets win this faceoff. Well, he's won 23 of the 41 by himself tonight. Carter wins the draw. Shot by Clutsum. Sails wide of the net. RJ Umber out of the corner. On for Nash. Nash pulling the trigger. Loose puck in front. Where is it? Final seconds tick off. And uh, this one will end with the Jackets in a flurry in front, but unable to beat Pecorine. And the Predators draw first blood in the season series. Beat the Jackets Ladies here on we'll opening night. Let's watch the scramble at the buzzer one more time. Well, another face-off win. The Jackets do gain control. And you can see Rick Nash coming in through that slot area, a little toe drag. But then, well, it's just pile in front of Rene. They take away all the space. So the Jackets head to Minnesota, looking to square their early season record after falling to the Predators tonight.